Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials I will teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. This tutorial is about the rules for overriding methods and specifically how they relate to polymorphism. I'm going to open up my web browser to my website, javacjava.com, select Menu and Java OOP Tutorials. I'm going to scroll all the way down here to the overriding instance methods. The JVM determines which instance method to invoke based on the type of the object, not the type of the reference variable. Because overriding instance methods form the cornerstone of polymorphism, it is necessary to go over some of the rules that apply to overriding methods. So if a superclass is marked public, then the subclass method must also be public. Weaker access will cause a compiler error. Okay, what I'm going to do is actually instead of reading all these and then going back to it, we'll go over these rules one by one and then go through the source code and example everything too as well. So I'm going to come down here, highlight this, hit Control c to copy or right click and select copy. I'm going to move my browser off screen here. I've got a shortcut to the command prompt on my desktop, but if you don't you can create one by uh, right, -click, right clicking excuse me, and selecting new shortcut. Type in cmd, next and finish. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is type in java c and press enter, which is the java compiler command. Um, you should see all this stuff scroll by. If you get an error message, go ahead and watch my tutorial on installing the Java Development Kit. I want to make sure you get that in, uh, installed and configured properly before continuing. CLS to clear the screen, then CD space backslash. CD is short for change directory, and backslash tells it to go to the root. Uh, I'm going to make a directory using the MD command called Java. Now I already have that, but if you don't, it'll create it for you. I'm going to change directories to the Java folder. And I'm going to make another directory here, and I'm just going to call this, um, let's just call this poly rules. I'm going to change directories to the poly rules folder. And I'm on notepad, poly rules.java. Poly rules.java is going to be the name of my source code file here. up off window there but okay I'm gonna go ahead and paste this stuff in here save this out and what I've got is I've got a parent class and a child class that extends parent class right um, and then I've got this other class poly rules with the main method entry point and the first statement in there I'm just creating a CC reference variable of child class type equal to a new child class um, object. Okay, and let me bring back over the website right at the moment here. So let's go through the rules one by one. So if a superclass method is public, then the subclass method must also be public. Weaker access will cause a compiler error. All right, let's see what that means here. So in the superclass, which is the parent class, I have this uh, method called I am public, right? And of course it is has the public modifier, void return type, um, I don't have anything in here. I don't want to muck everything up more than I have to. I'm just going to basically show you a whole bunch of compiler errors as this is going here. Now up here in the uh, main method here, it'll invoke the I am public, right? <coughs> there, uh, that method there. And in most cases, we'll just go through this there. So the first thing we want to test there is that line that said, if a superclass method is public, then the subclass method must also be public, right? So our subclass method is public, our superclass method is public. Let's go ahead and save this, clear our screen, Java C, and let's compile this, and we'll run it. Right, and of course nothing happened, but we didn't get any compiler errors or anything like that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to systematically come down here, comment this, and let's say for example this is if we applied protected I am public, which is weaker access, that's more restrictive per se, right? So let's go ahead and hit save, come back up here, we'll compile this, and you can see we get an error right there, right? Protected void I am public. 
attempting to assign weaker access privileges was public. So that's basically it's the compiler's complaining because up here in the parent class, it's public. In the child class, we're trying to ex uh, uh, assign a weaker access to it. And that's something that's not allowed. That's one of the rules here, right? Okay. Um, we'll go ahead and comment this one. Uh, uncomment this one. Let's save this. Here our screen. Okay, same thing here with just default, um, which is no access modifier, attempting to assign weaker access, access privileges was public. And finally, private. Okay. Now, it uh, complains a couple of times when we do that, but ultimately, attempting to assign weaker access privilege was public is the ultimate one that's going to crash it out here. It really doesn't like it that, uh, you know, I am public in child class cannot overwrite I am public in parent class, right? So, it uh, doesn't like that at all. All right, I'm going to go ahead and comment out that. Let's, see. Let's go tap up to our uh, <clears throat> next rule. So, uh, that takes care of this one here, right? If a superclass method is public, then the subclass method must also be public. Weaker access will cause a compiler error. Okay, our next one here is a super, if a superclass method is protected, then the subclass method can be either protected or public. Weaker access will cause a compiler error. All right, let's test that one up here. So I'm going to just comment out this one here. And here is the protected void I am protected in the super class, right? Parent class. Child class extends parent class, right? Subclass, super class. So we'll come down here first to the public and save that. Let's clear our screen. It compiles. And it runs. Right, so we're good to go on that. Uh, let's see. Let's come up here, let's save that. Check the protected. Compiles, and it runs. Okay, all right, let's check our default, which is no access modifier here. Let's come up, save this, compile, and we get an error, right? Attempting to access weaker, assign weaker access privileges was protected. All right, um, so doesn't like that. And the last one we'll try there is with the private, right? And we get a couple of errors on that, but ultimately attempting to assign weaker access was protected. Okay, so that takes care of the protected there. Go ahead and bring this back over there. So if, if a superclass method is protected, the subclass method can be either protected or public. Weaker access will cause a compiler error. The next one is, is if a superclass method has no access modifier, also known as default access, then the sub me subclass method can be either default, protected, or public private access will cause a compiler error. All right, let's give that a run here. So let's comment this, uncomment that. And you can see I have uh, void, I am default right here, no access modifier. And let's come down to that here. So public will be good. <coughs> let's save that. Compiles just fine. There. Let's get rid of all that stuff on there. All right, compiles just fine, runs just fine. And we'll move down to the next one. Compiles fine, runs just fine. All right, so you guys are getting the idea on this by now, I'm sure. Uh, it's going, everything's about to change just a little bit more here in just a second. Okay, um, so we're good to go there. And then the last thing that we do, when we try to assign the private modifier to the override of IM default, right? It's going to give us a nice little error there. Okay, same thing, assigning weaker access privileges. Okay, let's go ahead and clear our screen. 
now, now it'll start getting a little bit more interesting here. All right. So, right off the bat, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uncom or comment that and uncomment this. Now, we cannot invoke a private class via reference variable, right? Um, if we do try, it's, it's basically going to say I can't see it anyway. Now, at this point in time, we have private void I am private. Now, here's the question. When child class extends parent class, does it inherit this? And the answer is no, because this is private. Private means that this method is private only to everything inside of parent class. So it doesn't even inherit it there. So first off the bat, when we start messing around with the private stuff, we're just going to get a, uh, an error right up here that it just a, can't even invoke it, and it, because you just can't do that with a private method, right? It'll come up and say, error cannot find symbol, right? A symbol being it doesn't even know about this, because private is, is encapsulated inside a parent class, so it can't be seen outside of it via, um, especially via a reference there. So we won't even have that running there, but so we're basically just interested in compiler errors, right? Now, um, I'm going to bring this back over there. So if a superclass method is private, then the subclass method can be anything, right? Overriding is not occurring in this case. Private methods are not visible and not inherited. You would simply be declaring a new method in the subclass, right? Overriding has absolutely nothing to do with that. I can have a private right private uh, void I am private down here and then I can have a public void I am private right here okay we're not overriding it at all we're just creating a whole brand new method that's declared exactly like the other one only merely with a public modifier on it there okay so let's save this and as you can see no, nothing's wrong there. No point in really running it, but I will just anyway. You know, it doesn't hurt, so. But, okay, so we can do that. Let's come up here and save that. Protected, we can do that. We can do that. And we can do that, okay? Because overriding is not even involved. That private makes it so that um, that is only just to this that class right there, okay? Okay, so let's go over that rule again right there. If a superclass method is private, then the subclass, is, subclass method can be anything. Overriding is not occurring in this case. Private methods are not visible and not inherited. You would simply be declaring a new method in the subclass, okay? Now let's go over this next one here. The parameter list must be identical. If it is different, then you just created an overloaded method. All right, so we'll come back up here and let's do different parameter. And I've got a couple different calls to that here. So inside of the parent class, I have this public void different parameter and it's taking a string s for its parameter and then it's displaying that to the console okay um, in the subclass the child class here right i have a public void different parameter int i right same name same return type same access only a different parameter in there right and that'll display um, I times three to the console, okay? Now what we've done is we've created an overloaded method here, not an overridden one. So we'll be able to call them passing both arguments up here in the main method. 
All right, let's go ahead and save this. Let's clear our screen. Okay, hello and 27, just what we expected there. And then nine, of course, nine times three is 27. Um, okay, so let's bring that back over there. So the parameter list must be identical. If it is different, then you just created an overloaded method. All right. Um, next one. If a superclass method is final, then the method cannot be overridden. And that's actually like the very definition of a final, um, a final method there is that it can't be overridden. All right. So I've got this final void. I am final, right? And if I uncomment this here, we're going to get a nice compiler error because it's going to scream at us there right off the bat. Okay, let's clear our screen. Go ahead and try to compile. Error. I am final in shadow class cannot override I am final in parent class. Overridden method is final. Okay, so that is pretty straightforward there. Save that. Bring this back over. If a superclass method is final, then the method cannot be overridden. Okay, and the last one here, <clears throat> the return type in a subclass must be the same as the superclass. Yeah, I'll go over what a covariant uh, return type is in a future tutorial here, but for now, just go ahead and go with this until I go over the covariant return tutorial, uh, which is basically a subtype of something. So the return type in the subclass must be the same as the superclass. All right, let's go up here. And I have just this int different return type, right? And that'll just basically return one. And then down here in the child class, I have double different return type return one. So the only difference here is the return type. One's an int and the other's a double. So let me show you what happens there. Okay. Yeah, I'll just clear the screen so we can get Get just the one error up there. Okay, so return type double is not compatible with int. So that is basically that too as well there. All right. Um, so the return type in the subclass must be the same or a subtype in the case of a covariant return as the superclass. Now there are a few more rules that are beyond the scope of this tutorial with regards to the entire series thus far. Um, I will be discussing covariant methods, re method returns and exception handling shortly. Now, after I cover these topics, I will go over any additional rules in a future tutorial. So I'm going to go ahead and just get this off screen here. <clears throat> get rid of that, get rid of that. And so I'll leave you with some final thoughts here. Now, the rules in this tutorial apply to method overriding in general. Now, I chose to incorporate them with polymorphism based solely on the current progress in my tutorial series as a whole thus far. So anyway, that concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.